Yo, Desmond, what do you want to learn about today? Phase changes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to another episode of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. It is hot! I'm like roasting here. You know you're in for it when your local meteorologist starts saying things like, Ring of Fire. Man, it's been sweltering here. I think it's time to do an experiment that's going to cool things down. Today I thought this would be a perfect time to learn some things about phase changes in a figuratively and literally very cool way. You know what a phase change is, right? The three traditional states of matter, phases, are the solid, liquid, and gas phase. And any time you change from one to the other, you're performing a phase change. Freezing, melting, vaporization, condensation, even some extra cool ones are out there like sublimation and deposition. Hey viewers, do you already know the temperature that water does its phase change from liquid to solid? 32 degrees Fahrenheit, right? That's also 0 degrees Celsius. Same temperature, just on a different scale. In fact, the Celsius scale is actually determined by what water's phase changes do. That's why 0 is freezing and 100 is when it boils. The temperature that a chemical freezes at is called its freezing point. And not everybody realizes this, but that's going to be then the same temperature that it melts at. It's also the melting point. So really you can call it the freezing melting point. Which one it does just depends upon are you giving it energy? Melting. Or are you taking that energy away? Freezing. So for water, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. That's the rule, right? Well, you know what? Sometimes, it's kind of fun to break the rules. Especially with science. It sends a little shiver up your spine. And that's what we're gonna do today. Let's rebel against the temperature scale. So what materials do we need for our little rebellion today? For starters, you're gonna need a 20 ounce bottle and it's gonna need to have distilled water in it. Some people use tap water for this, and I'm not saying that that could never work. Sometimes it does, but you just don't have reliable results. Distilled water is the way to go. You're going to need a lot of salt. About one pound should do it. This thing only costs 86 cents, and I'm probably going to use the whole thing to do this. You will need ice for this. So hope you got plenty of that. And you're also going to need some container that can house the 20 ounce bottle, but at the same time leaves room for ice and salt. I'm going to use an empty coffee grounds container. Seems to work good for me. All right, so what's the idea? How are we gonna break these rules? How will we launch our rebellion? Well, first off, let me be a little bit more honest with you. When I say that the freezing point of water is zero degrees Celsius, that's actually the normal freezing point for water. You see, what can cause a substance to go through a phase change, it's not just about the temperature. It also matters what pressure it's at. When we say normal freezing point, we mean under normal pressure conditions. Well, what we're gonna do to break the rules is we're gonna not let the conditions be normal. To help you understand what I mean, we're gonna have to take a look at what happens to water down at the molecular level when it freezes. Check this out. Here's a representation of a water molecule I made using some gumdrops. I've got a red one there in the center to represent oxygen and two white ones on the ends to represent hydrogens, H2O. And water molecules do have this bent structure. It gives them some really unique properties. Well, let's put this one with some other water molecules. Here in the liquid state, water molecules, they move around seemingly at random. They're able to slide past each other, which gives water the ability to flow in the liquid state. And you might notice also, there's not a whole lot of empty space in between them. They're right up next to each other. This makes water not significantly compressible. You can't really squeeze it together much. So how does this compare to water in the solid state? Well, here we have ice down at the molecular level. Once water molecules are slowed down enough, which is what it really means to get colder, then the attractive forces between them start to take over and start to align them in these nice hexagonal shapes. It's kind of beautiful. And notice there's a lot of empty space in those hexagons. The water molecules have actually spread out. If we compare liquid water here on the left and solid water on the right, using six molecules for each, you can see how much more space that solid structure takes up compared to the liquid space. For water to freeze, in other words, it needs to be able to expand so it can create this spatial structure. It's this expansion of water that we're going to take advantage of. So when water freezes, it actually expands. The molecules rearrange in such a way that they take up more space. Another way of saying that same idea though is to say, in order for water to freeze, it needs to have enough space to allow it to expand. So if you don't allow that to happen, your water's gonna have a much more difficult time freezing. 
So in today's experiment, we're going to get the water really cold at a really fast rate and we're not going to let it have any room to expand and become solid ice. So even if the water reaches zero degrees Celsius or even gets colder, we're going to keep it under enough pressure to where it's going to stay in the liquid state. Super cooled water. Liquid water that's so cold it shouldn't be liquid water anymore. Now if that's the only thing that we were doing today, just getting water really, really cold, that would be kind of boring. The fun comes in when we verify for you that we really have reached the super cooled status. Here's the hypothesis for today. If we cool water very rapidly and we don't give it any room to expand, we will achieve super cool status. And we will then be able to verify this by reverting back to normal conditions. And when we do, we will rapidly see the liquid water reach the solid state. All right, it's time for the experiment, but you know, I think I'm gonna need an assistant for this one. Well, we're here with, what's your name again? Desmond. Desmond. You wanna have some fun? Yes. Desmond, where, what state are you from? North Carolina. North Carolina, all right, well, we're gonna teach you some Michigan science. What are we learning about? Phase changes. We got our stuff, right? Yes. We got the coffee container. We got the salt. Where's the water? I forgot the water. Why'd you forget the water? You never told me that, the, that there was water. So, we got our bottle of water. Yep. Is that solid, liquid, or gas right now? Liquid. We got liquid. We're gonna get this liquid really, 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 really cold. Okay. We're gonna get it so cold, it should freeze. Yes. But because it's tight in the bottle, it won't. How are we gonna do that? We need ice, and we also need salt. Help me out here, man. That's a lot of ice. Take this ice and put it in there. It's heavy, and it's cold. I can't get it. Keep going, you're doing fine. Uh, it's way too much. All right, should we break it up? Yeah. Oh. All right, take some more. Here's some more. Nuts! There's a lot of breaking ice. Yep. Now we're gonna leave some of this ice out here. We're gonna Did need you more. know that ice can turn into liquid? It can melt. Next, if we put salt on the ice, a lot of salt, it's gonna make that ice go into the liquid phase. It's gonna need energy to do that. So it's gonna absorb energy from everywhere including this canister and including our water. I want you to go ahead and pour a whole lot of salt into that ice. Okay, yeah, that's good. Let's we'll shake it up. Now, we're gonna stick this in there. Now, more ice. What's happening is getting me cold and it's making me get soggy. You're getting soggy? Now, I'm gonna put more salt around here on this ice. You want all of it to be cold. Desmond, are you eating the salt? How's the salt taste? Disgusting. It's been 15 minutes. Okay, Desmond, you gotta stop eating the salt, man. It's been 15 minutes. Now, in there is some water, and it got so cold, it's like it wants to freeze. If we let it out of the bottle, what will happen with that water? That will freeze. It will freeze? Yes. You ready? Yes. Yes. We gotta get some ice. We're gonna pour it onto the ice. So we're pouring it onto something cold. Wipe off the bottle a little bit. It's super cold. We're gonna open it, pour it onto the ice. Wow. It's really frozen. It is really frozen. I agree. It's turning into ice right before your eyes. When you pour it onto the ice, it'll just turn into it. It feels gooey. Did you have fun? Yes. Is that cool? What did yes. you think of that? Tell me what tell me about it. Tell me what happened. It feels gooey and scary. What happened when we poured this? It turned into ice. Why? That's because we keep it in for a long time 
that we brought it on, it made it turn into ice. Was it cold in there? Yes, really cold. Oh yeah, that is really cold. It <laughs> tastes salty too. Desmond, I want to thank you very much for helping me. For helping me from North Carolina. There you go. What should we do with this ice? How are we gonna clean this up? What are you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, man, Desmond, science is fun. Science. Science. Okay, so the instant freezing of the water, I think totally verifies that our hypothesis was supported. As did the extra ice that went down my shirt that you didn't get to see on camera. I hope you have a great summer and I really hope you have fun with this experiment. And I'd love to hear some comments from you about how it goes. So if you try it out, please leave a comment below and let us know what were your results. And also, at Indie Labs, we love fulfilling your requests. So if you've got a suggestion for a science topic you want to see us explore, whatever it may be, go ahead and let us know about it in the comments below. Come on, let's go. I love a challenge. And if we take you up on your suggestion, we'll be sure to mention you in that episode. I really want to thank my nephew Desmond for helping me out with this one. I love that kid. Guess what he already says he wants to be when he grows up. Thanks for checking out this episode. I'm Rich Lund, and I hope you budding scientists out there know that even before this experiment, you already were super cool in my book. Oh yeah, we earned it. And if the kid who's seen that struggle that I give the helping hand, especially if that is something he or she has never had. You think I joined this profession just to teach chemistry? Number one reason is to reach them, teach them how to achieve dreams. In a world of broken rules, we set them loose our problems at their feet. They need the tools to undo issues made by you and Cool stuff.